Good. Good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, I am really, really, it's beyond word. I did not expect such nice welcoming. And I must uh, say that your colleague who was speaking Czech, it was, yeah, it was perfect. Yeah. So congratulations. Uh, I did not know that you also have Czech studies here, but maybe in, in near future. Uh, I am amazed because I am actually first European ambassador being here. Uh, I can see you had uh, Australian and Russian and Mexican ambassadors, so I am first European. So it's really honor for me, and also I am very happy to be here, uh, to be first person after pandemic. So thank you very much. Uh, dear Mr. President, uh, Nilo Rosa. Dear uh, Mr. Dean of School of International Relations, Mr. Tabunda. Uh, dear members of the New Era University, all faculties, students, officers, uh, dear sisters and brothers. Uh, let me say I am very, very happy I can be here with you this morning. Uh, it's really my distinct pleasure and I would like to thank you for the invitation and for the interest uh, to, that you want to know more about my country, about Czech Republic and about Europe. I am truly honored and excited to talk about my country, which is located in the heart of Europe. And most especially, I am really happy to see you in person after two years of lockdown and not being able to hold any physical gatherings during this pandemic. Over the past years, we have observed that the complexity of the pandemic intersected with other social economic issues, including education. There were many challenges posed by both teachers and students and an alternative way of learning was needed to be at pair with the current situation. And I am happy to hear that New Era University coped with the situation very well. I know from my, from my friend, your student, Dani Obejera, that you had very good quality learning and you were in contact with students. So thank you very much for this. Uh, let me mention that Czech Republic was and still is one of the many institutions and organizations who advanced firstly, who advocate firstly on the reopening of schools and universities, both in Czech Republic and in the Philippines, at least for low risk areas after a study revealed that prolonged absence of face-to-face -face classes will impact the country's competitiveness and productivity. Also, the impact on both students and teachers is enormous. And therefore, I am very, very happy I can see plenty of you here today. And we just have to pray that this will be better and better. Uh, for since my arrival and for the longest time, the embassy of the Czech Republic in Manila puts premium on education. We see it not only as a mechanism that harness the competitiveness and productivity of an individual and therefore the country, but also as a tool for better nation building. In fact, our two countries have long relationship when it comes also to education. Starting from the Czech missionaries, including Pablo Klein, who came in the Philippines and eventually became rector of Colegio de Cavite as well as the rector of Colegio de San Jose and later Jesuit provincial superior in the Philippines. Our history also tells that importance of exchange through the friendship of Czech-born Professor Blumentritt, who was born in Prague like me, and your national hero, Jose Rizal, 
who exchanged books, references, ideas, lots of letters about both countries. All of these could not deny that our relationship on education goes a long and traditional way. Presently, the Embassy of the Czech Republic is also an active partner in the European Higher Education Fair along with the, Euro with the European Member States and the delegation of European Union. We bring together universities from our country to speak to, to the students and uh, professors from Filipino universities. And uh, they, they, they show each other opportunities uh, in Czech Republic and, and Europe. Uh, apart from this exchange of very important information on education in Europe, we also partner with universities for various activities, including cultural programs. I recognize the important role of universities as a harbinger of information. We often conduct exhibits, lots of symposiums related to history, science, and culture. And I really hope maybe soon we can do something here. I am ready to come and maybe with, with you uh, do some lecture on Czech Republic or European Union. So I am really looking forward to it. Uh, the Czech Republic, uh, while it may be a quite small country, we have only 10 million people uh, and also relatively small in geographical size. It's a country which is full of history and culture. Let me also mention that during the pandemic, while the economy was also affected, the country was able to keep its position as one of the most competitive countries in the world, as well as along the most stable and thriving markets in Central Europe. Its financial sector remained resilient amid the adverse effects of the pandemic and maintained a robust capital and liquidity position. The country still records quite low unemployment rate among other European Union countries, which reflects Czech people motivation to work as well as their capacity and skills to be employed in different industries. Very much like Filipinos, I think being East European, we are not spoiled and we, we work hard. Uh, in terms of quality of life, uh, also, the Czech Republic, I, I dare to say it's idle country to reside, given the country's affordable goods and services, flourishing social scene and outdoor activities. We have quite, quite low uh, criminal rate, very sound uh, business regulations, good infrastructure, and strong logistic performance. These are just overview of what the Czech, what Czech Republic is, and I am really honored to be sharing this information with you today, and I hope to talk to you in person uh, more concretely uh, in, in a few minutes. And I also hope that uh, at least some of you will be able to come one day and visit uh, my country, Czech Republic. I would like to reiterate my keen interest in knowing your university, the new, the new era university. I wanted to visit before pandemic, so I am very, very grateful. It may happen today. I, I am really eager seeing that it's among the biggest universities in the Philippines with various campuses located across the country. And I can see that there are enormous range of different programs that you offer. I look forward to further collaboration with you in the future. And hopefully, we will be also able to conduct maybe some culturally related activities with you. And I am positive that some, if not all, as I already said, will come and visit my country. Doesn't matter if for studies or just as tourists. So thank you very much. 
for your such a warm welcome. I am really touched. And it's my pleasure to be with you today. And last but not least, I would like to thank again my colleagues from the embassy who are here with me today, Ms. Karen, Ms. Rowena, and the Dodge, who's actually also graduated from your, from your uh, schools many years ago, <laughs> and her daughter, Dani, who's your current student. Thank you very much, and I am open to further discussion with you. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is our pleasure to 